you wanted to see a review on the UV slider. Let me tell you something about a review. To me, a review means that you have utilized it in the field. I'm not gonna advertise this video as that, but what I am gonna promise you is that I'm gonna show you top four or five sites, including the UV slider, and I'm coming at it with the only perspective of, I don't give a crap about how I shoot paper or how I shoot foam. I don't score my stuff. I'm not a professional archer. You know what I care about? Putting it through the lungs of critters. I've had you guys message me. You're like, Dan, you're no BS dude. You're damn straight. I'm gonna shoot you straight. I'm transparent. None of these sites you're gonna see, I never paid for them. I didn't pay for them. Big kind of rant in the beginning. I wanted to get your attention and I wanted to stand out from the rest. Before I get to the UV3, let me break this down for you guys. This is the CBE Trek. It's that three pin, it's vertical. This is on my current bow right now. Like this is the bow, like if I went elk hunting tomorrow, this is the bow I'm going with. I just shot this um, with a fill point broadhead at 60, 80, and 106 yards. I'll show you those groups right now. Sixty yards. Oh boy. Huh. Eighty yards. Check it out. One oh six. This thing's a shooter. It's the Face Four Twenty Nine. I had the QAD Integrate, which I've never ran QADs before, but damn it, I love the containment and that it is seamless integration into my Matthews. Let's just talk about the bad right off the gates. Like these little doodads here are, these are chintzy. They, they're going to bend. They are like your dial indicators are absolute garbage. They probably already know, but that's like my, my biggest disappointing thing. I have heard that this knob right here, which is your set screw for windage, is flimsy and your windage could move. So I went ahead and tightened it with an Allen. I got my windage really, really good. I could still crack it if I needed to, but I silver sharpie out of this site so that nothing moves. And I also will tell you what I do like about this site. The first axis or the rail adjustment is right here. You crack these two screws and you get this level, this rail level with your string. Step one, piece of cake. Then second axis, super easy. It says second axis right here. You crack both those, watch your bubble, and you get your bubble to match your rail, to match your string. So you have string levels, you got a ham ski tool, your rail's adjusted, your second axis is adjusted. This is important because if you don't do this perfect, you're gonna walk out at 20 and hit bullseyes, then you're gonna back out to 70 or 80, and you're gonna be just trending left trending left or trending right. And you're gonna be like, man, I'm torquing the boat. No, you're not, you're, your rail's off, your second axis off. So get that stuff dialed. You CVE killed it on this. Their third axis adjustment. I did the door, uh, the door jam trick. So I put the ham ski tool on it, pulled it back with an arrow in it, down, checked my ham ski bubble, it's level, checked my sight bubble. It, it's way over here in India. So I had to make, I cracked the bottom, adjusted it in, got my third axis dialed, piece of cake. I easily set in 20, okay? I never adjusted anything other than the rail, found 20. And it happens to be at the dead stop, so I got super lucky. Then I was like, okay, let's check that second pin. I backed up to 30, shot 30, bullseye. I was like, damn, I'm getting lucky. I know I can adjust the top and the bottom for sure. I'm not, I don't know, and I haven't done the research, so you guys will know, uh, and just, I'm sorry, I'm running out of time going elk hunting here, but. 
I don't think you can adjust the second pin. I think that's what Josh told me, but I can't remember. Uh, but I got lucky, I didn't have to. And then I backed up to 40 bullseye. I was like, holy crap, 20, 30, 40 is dialed. So I have 20, 30, 40 in a vertical pin. Hey, Black Gold, if you're listening to me, I told you guys to take your dual track and make it three pins and it'd be the side of the year. Well, you did it, CBE did. And I think that's like awesome. You can also adjust how much light comes in here, which is great. Again, the micro adjust, the knobs pretty good. Um, the sight tape's awesome. Uh, the, the fit and the bridge lock, I mean, that's really, in, like, it's easy to do nowadays. So everything's really good. I'm getting good windage. I have the bridge lock where it kicks out enough to give me all the windage I need. A light that can come off and on, so you're legal in most states. Um, the, this is my current bow. I'm go, if I had to go hunt tomorrow, this would be on there, and that's what I'm using. As promised, I want to go through in detail some of the other sites. And then the price point on this is right here. And if you think about it, durability wise, I'm going to say, I'm not sure. I'm very nervous about this. Just from what I've read in the comments, I'm worried about that windage coming loose. And then these pin indicators are trash, but I'm still willing to risk it for the biscuit with this thing because I love the sight picture. The end, I'm going to be a little more delicate with this bow. I'm going to put it in a bow case. And when I travel anywhere, it's going to stay in a bow case. And when I start hiking, I'm not going to put on my back. I'm going to always keep my bow in my hand. Um, let's go over the Canyon Pounder. Let's go over the HHA Rise. And then let's finish with the UV Slider. And I'm going to shoot you guys straight on all of them so that you can make your decisions. But this does not cost $5.99. Something to think about. So for a price point, damn good option. Hey guys, want to interrupt the video today to let you know we do have a podcast. The Elk Shape Podcast is on iTunes, Spotify, whatever you choose, whatever platform. This is year six. We're actually closing out, coming up on year seven. What we sell is hard work. We bring on awesome guests. If you've never checked out our podcast, we invite you to do that. Also, if you want to help support our efforts, feel free to head over to elkshape.com. Check out our store. We have a lot of the stuff that we cover in there. Appreciate your support. Back to the video. All right. This is the HHA Rise. Great frame, so if you want to run a UV 3XL regular or I don't know what you guys, you kids in Target Archery World or whatever, you can use the Tetra Max, the rise part of it. It's awesome. I tried it, it was cool, but I actually like the HHA housing a lot. Like, and I think for the price, it's in the fours. It's pretty steep, but it's not as steep as UV. And it's definitely like they cut corners on things like their packaging is like not attractive. Like UV does like Apple type packages, everything's pretty, the aesthetics, the QR codes, the instructions, the simplicity, amazing marketing. My hat's off to you, UV. HHA, you need to work on your boxing, your packaging, your instructions, it's, um, you just got work to do. Uh, I've met the folks at HHA, I've been to their uh, establishment, we got a video on there somewhere you guys can check out. I love the people there, they're amazing and they're all made in America, so you can't beat that. The Tetra Max fits beautifully into the bridge lock, the th I'm going to start at the third axis adjustment. It's easily one of the easiest ones here. You're going to do your set screw here. Then you got your little driver right here. You can shoot it in. I did that. I went steep uphill shots at like, I think it was 75 or 80 yards. And I was just trending left, trending left. I had a piece of tape on this mountain goat target at Spoken Valley Archery. And I just kept drifting left. Cracked this. Made a teeny tiny little adjustment. Brought all my arrows back. Boom, I got my third axis. Now their second axis adjustment or their rail adjustment, it's a little funky, it's all in here. And it's one of those deals where it's kind of all in one second, first and second rail are kind of together. So the barrel of this perpendicular to that, you have to kind of set it together at the same time. So you really gotta trust your string level and you gotta trust this, it's, it's good. Um, it's not the best, but once you get it set, you can fix it and forget it. Uh, the pens are easy to adjust. They're not, there's no micro dial, but you can just crack these, get it set up. I have sweeping pens together. I love that. It's got a great sight picture and I love the tunnel of the scope and the housing. I got them at 10,000 and I custom order green, yellow, green. Who likes red anyways, honestly? Uh, I like them a little smaller for longer distances, aim small, miss small. And then you can adjust this for how much light gathering capability by tightening or loosening will get let you know what's up. Micro adjust windage, which is awesome. The adjustments on the up and down, not the dial, but just getting your, your elevation doped in initially is a little bit of a pain in the butt. It's like a little bit harsh. It's not a lot of fine tuning. They need to probably work on that. Um, I'm sure they are. 
Uh, love the barrel system here. Like this knob is awesome. And the fact that you got a set screw that you can loosen, pop off, put on other sight tapes for, like I literally just took my tack tape off and put my hunting tape on this phase four. This is my backup, backup phase four. Um, yeah, man. So love that. I, I can have put my 344 grain arrows. Um, I can put that sight tape on. I can put the 425s or my 433s or my 454s. Yeah, I have lots of setups and I, this thing can keep up with me. Now, the two dial indicators are awesome, but they're not movable. There's no micro adjust to them. They're fixed. They're set. They are what they are. That's a huge issue. They need to fix that so that you can micro adjust those. Um, but at least their indicators are way better than the CBE. Uh, bubble's big. I like that. I like the housing size. It's not obnoxiously big. Like the triple stack from Spot Hog was a pretty good site, but the housing is just stupid big. And hey, man, we're trying to sneak arrows underneath that site. We can't have a giant uh, site housing. So all in all, real good. I would say this is definitely bang for your buck. One of my absolute top picks. We're talking about Daniel Evans Option Archer. His site's expensive too now, but I think the one thing he has over UV slider, in my opinion, is the option to run multiple pins or to open the door and have that single pin horizontal. That dude, like that, set, that sets him apart. I haven't opened the UV slider up yet, so we'll get to it. But this guy right here, this knob, you can adjust. It's fine adjustment. It stops. It doesn't move. You don't have to tighten, loosen anything. Dan killed it on this. I'm anxious to see if the UV slider is as good as this. This is like part of what you're really getting when you get this uh, Canyon Pounder. Uh, it's bright. You can throw a battery on it. You can micro adjust in here. I'll get you guys all close ups after I film this. How's that? I'll come back. This is a little behind the scenes. I'll get like macro lens. And I'll get you all these little cool tights while I'm talking. You can see everything I'm talking about. Um, this site does so much stuff. Uh, you can kick out for bridge lock. You can adjust the third axis in the bubble. You have your second axis adjustment. And a lot of these are set like oval. So it does rotate. So you can definitely get your first rail true to the string. Dan gets it. Dan's a really good archer. He understands that. You can get your second axis doped. Um, I made a video a month ago showing the third axis adjustment on the second axis. And I hope you guys caught that. I totally made a mistake. Dan had to uh, send me a text and tell me I'm an idiot. And he's right. Sorry about that. Um, so that was the three pin. This is the five pin. Um, you notice that this is the direct mount. It saves a lot of weight. And I can't say enough great things about this. Well, why aren't you using this, Dan? Who's to say I'm not? I am two days away from a, a new bow to set up before I walk out the door for hunting. So y'all saw the bow I would take if I left right now. That's technically my backup bow. So we'll see. I'm probably, I'm gonna shoot you guys. I'm your honest friend. I'm gonna run the Canyon Pounder or the UV slider on this new boat. And then obviously you guys won't know until the boat drops in November or whatever. Signed my non-disclosure agreement today, so that's all I can say about that. Um, all right, end of the video. We're gonna go right to the UV slider. I already know the high points because I did my research. I read through their materials. So I'm gonna run through it quick and I'm anxious to actually get my eyeballs on it. Here we go. Okay, I feel like I had to change the scene for a little more fancy because we're doing the UV. Um, here we go, let's break it down. So we did the unboxing, we unboxed it. Really nice packaging, very, the aesthetics, they're like Apple, uh, just really good user experience. I think some other brands should take note. Uh, and I've always experienced that with all UltraView products, so just attention to detail. It's cool because maybe that attention to detail follows in the engineering and how it's put together. So let's break this thing down, where to start? Okay, here it is. This is it guys, clamp it down, unlock it. Ergonomically speaking, nailed it. I mean, that is the best ergonomics I've seen on the slider, period. They, the size, the grip, gription, the lever with the index and the thumb, uh, it's a no brainer. Let's look at the first thing I'm gonna note is, you guys can see, we got lights. I hunt Idaho. They are real sticklers about anything electronic on your bow. Trust me, it drives me nuts because I'd love to put like a video camera GoPro on my bow. Always wanted to, can't do it in Idaho. So I got to take this off, which sucks. But when you hunt states that can, like Utah, which I'm going to hunt this year, I'm going to put that sucker on. So just know the rules 
and they gave me this option right here to put this in. So um, I think I'm gonna do that first. On these first gens, their set screws were pretty much, I'm just making fun of everybody, but they're kind of garbage. One thing to note is if you, when you do do your sight tapes, you're gonna wanna take this cartridge off anyways and plop it down on the ground next to your sight tape and you can line up your pins so you can have exact precision. I think that's really important. That's one thing I've always appreciated about the way that their technology allows you to break this thing apart. So I'm gonna pull batteries off. Still have good fiber optics. And then we can just put this in. That makes me happy. Notice I couldn't back this Allen out like the old designs. You could, those Allens would come flying out, these little set screws. You just back it out until it won't let you back out anymore and you're good. And then we're gonna tighten it. All right, so now I'm legal to hunt Idaho. When I go to Utah, the sucker's going on. Got it? Okay, so that's why that's included. They thought of that. I was worried about that. The housing size is not obnoxious. I like that. The bubble is oversized. I also really like that. The pin sizes are genius, so green, yellow, green, yellow, the little baby tack pin at the bottom was so you can have max distance and also no red. Nobody Who likes red? I've already said that. Pin sizes for the main three pins, 0 0.015, so 15 thou. I haven't heard of anyone doing that. That's a very happy medium. Um, and then that very bottom pin is, that fourth one is 10 thou, so 0 0.010. And I wanted to say that that middle pin is fixed. Just remember that. So that's gonna be in the very center of your housing. That's a good pin to probably have as your slider maybe. Um, some guys will do their bottom, some guys will do their top. Uh, but you're gonna have three indicators on your slider and their indicators are the best I've ever seen. So CBE, take note of that. Maybe if that's not trademark, steal their idea. It's really good. Locking lever, uh, I'm super impressed. Windage adjustment, dual dial. So you're gonna basically just pull that out and then you can rock this. Right moves the site right, left moves the site left. Hmm, who'd have thought? And then just push it in, set it. It's not gonna get bumped or moved. That's awesome. So this is the deal. Let's put it on the rail. Now this is bridge lock because it sweeps out so that everything can be cleared on the bridge lock. You can also do direct mount, like a dovetail. You could also do the Picatinny deal if you're one of those guys. The first and second access is one of those site companies where they're gonna do this for you in-house. So quality control is a must, UV. So basically your first, your rail and your second access is in the bubble. You will not need a Hamsky tool. And so you'll just put that in there and if your bubble is level, that means that your rail is level to your string and at the second axis. So it kind of skips a step for you. We're gonna test that when we build this new bow, if we do end up using this, well, that's pretty cool. And then your third axis, and by the way, everything's micro adjust. So we're talking just little teeny tiny clicks to get it like precision. I love micro adjust everything because I think with the sight, like that is so important. And then your third axis screws are here and so that you can move the sight in or out clockwise, counterclockwise, fine tune it, shoot it in or do the door jam trick. I would probably shoot it in steep uphill, downhill shots on a day that you're shooting good. Uh, let's get it on there. So once this is in the bridge lock, um, I have one, two, three little indentations to where I can put that bridge lock set screw. I'm gonna bring this site as close to the riser as possible. That's just me. And let's get this on. Let's see how intuitive this is. I'm gonna go from the bottom just because it does have this little click thing where you can leave this in your bridge lock and just pull your head off for travel. And it's not gonna, like everything's gonna be set fine. That's pretty genius. I know that a lot of times when I'm backpack hunting, I hate having my expensive sight on my bow, on my backpack, fighting through brush and stuff. So, all right, so we're gonna push this in, open up, clicked. Once you hear the click, you're in, slide up, good to go. Um, damn, it's got a dead stop. I'd love my dead stop to be home for 20. That way, if you're in the heat of moment, you just flip your lever up, bring it up quick, lock it down, go and shoot open tons of travel i think they really wanted to allow us to shoot long distances you're going to be able to shoot the furthest with this site out of any site you've ever shot especially with that bottom pin being just barely visible above the bubble um, micro adjust on the indicators sight tape dual capacity just like the canyon pounder so you could probably like what Dan Evans did on his Canyon Pounders, he had like your main sight tape, like let's say 20 to 110. 
and then his site opens up so your single pin could be like home for your single pin could be 40. Well, you could flip it over on this side. If your site tape starts at 40, you're going to be able to go down further. Um, or if your bottom pin is your floater, your site tape could start at 60 and you could have your um, basically your longer distance slider. So Dan Evans thought of that with the Canyon Pounder. That's probably what I would do with this one as well as maybe have like, you know, your 20 to 130 and have your top pin be your slider. And then if you want to use your bottom pin as a slider, maybe you're going to start over here on this side with 50 and it's got a little indicator over here next to the knob. If you guys can see that it's got a little indicator here. So you could literally have like kind of like dual sight tapes. You could even have like sight tape A for this arrow, sight tape B for this arrow on the back side. I wouldn't do that, but you could. You could even leave like your sight in tape always on this side in case you needed to re-sight in in the field or whatever. That's a good idea. But I think what I would do was probably go like 20 to 130, I'm guessing. And then on this side, my bottom pin probably would be 20, 30, 40, 50. So 50 to maybe 160 for those tack shots or whatever, I'm going to shoot you straight. This thing is amazing. Only concerns. Is it bulletproof? Is it indestructible? Is it delicate? And if it is delicate for this price point, you better stand behind your product UV. So that's it. I have it narrowed down to this or the Canyon Pounder for my 2024 bow that I'm going to hunt in 2023. You can buy this with or without the head. You can just get the rail. Oh, by the way, landslide, I would be concerned. These guys are going to give you a run for your money. Mark my words. This is definitely the smoothest dial on the market that I've tested to date. And Canyon Pounder is a close second. Weight-wise, this is not heavy. I don't know the actual weight. I should have weighed it. If I was a professional, I would. But I'm here to tell you this ain't heavy at all. Sight tapes. It's going to come with both southpaw and right-handed sight tapes, which is huge for everyone. So you don't have to order special sight tapes. And they go out to 140 to start with. Thank you. Nobody wants just sight tapes that end at 100. Thank you. Again, the quick break on the bottom so you can take the sight off without messing anything up for safe travel. Plus, they have a nice fancy storage case that it comes with. I do think down the road, this visoring is going to be able to offer in different colors, although I absolutely love white. Price point, 600 bucks. Without this, just the rail for something. Okay. You guys have... So, UV UltraView. Remember, guys, I don't know anyone at UltraView. They sent this to me. I don't owe them anything other than honesty. I'm friggin' impressed. I'm blown away. And I have it narrowed down to like the two best sites in 2023, in my opinion, are the Canyon Pounder and probably this UV slider. This is going to be an extremely difficult decision for me to make once that bow comes in. I got to go check my email for tracking, but I wanted to get this video out. Guys, I have several videos scheduled while I'm gone in September. I hustled really hard this year to keep content going while I'm gone, but I'm going to be off the grid. I won't be checking comments. I won't be checking messages, emails. My wife will be a little, but I'm going to be out doing that public land hustle. I can't wait to bring some of that content back to you guys this year. And if you are a huge supporter of this channel, I want you to know that I appreciate you guys. And I want you to understand the only thing we truly want to sell you is hard work, disciplined decisions, and separating yourself through your preparation. Appreciate you guys. We'll catch you on the next one.